This is going to be a wonderful sister to sister. A fellow wrote in and said, mm -hmm. my mother wants to correct my children, Ooh. her grandchildren. Should we let that happen? Ooh, great question. And also, what bad habits do Christian women need to break? And what is the greatest lesson you've learned in your life? Ooh, I'm still learning. Me too. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. We're so happy to have you in the house with us today. We are five women of God, kind of opinionated, which you'll find out right about now. So we ask questions, uh, you send us, and you send us this one. You said, my son has said I cannot correct my grandchild, but when they come to visit me on my turf, my own house, I feel like I have the right to speak up. So who is right on that? You're a grandma, Flo, come on. The grandmother is absolutely, positively <laughs> correct, 1,000% correct. And what do you mean coming on your turf? He is your turf, he came, he or she yeah. came out of your womb. Yeah. You carried him nine yeah. months, you had yeah. how many hours of labor, you nursed, you fed, you, you burped, you, you tended to Change the sickness, the poopy disease. Diapers. That's right, poopy yeah. diapers. Poopy business. diapers. I mean, really, let's just get this straight. But there is a way that you go about it. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, what type of correction are we talking about? That's first of all. Second of all, seriously, all, all jokes aside, we don't supersede, we come along and support. Right. Oh, and, and like, it, it, biblically, it is the role of the grandparents to yes. um, disciple and to uh, help in the building of that legacy of faith, mm. such as Timothy's grandmother. Yep. So all jokes aside, uh, your, my prayer would be for the child, meaning my son or daughter, that, you know, because in, in, in struct a fool, he becomes angry. Yes. Instruct a wise man, he becomes even wiser. So it's very foolish um, to not receive the counsel of your elders regardless if it's a grandparent or just in other cultures really have that down pat and I yes. respect it so much. Right. But the Western culture, we tend to dismiss yeah. our elders. I mean, yes. I feel Google yes. has kind of yes. taken its place. You know, we used to call, you know, let me call uh, auntie yeah. and, and see how did she make that potato salad or how do you make, now we Google right. the recipe, yeah. which also auntie kind of loses that place of significance that she That's had in the right. family where, cause she, we kind of looked to her for this or that. Now we're Google and it, it makes people have that false sense of security, yeah. you know, because they feel so self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And you are who you are because of the lineage yeah, that God from, placed right. you on, right. into. Yeah. And so grandparents are good stewards and keepers of that. Dis but should there be a mutual respect? Absolutely. Well, does anyone disagree? No, and you're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to build on it. How's that? All right. Maybe. Um, my, uh, speaking from my own experience, my parents could tell my children things I could not. Yeah, mm. that's in so the right true. way. Yeah, they're back. Their wisdom. They had all these years. They saw the end and the beginning, and so they're not as intense about the moment, <laughs> right? Like a mother <laughs> is of her that's first yeah, child. That's true. That's true. That's really has good. to do everything that's right. Really yes. Good. So my parents gave the sweetness to the discipline. So I just tell this feller or woman or whoever it is, allow your parents in the Lord to say things maybe you cannot say. Mm -hmm. And building on her legacy, mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. the Bible over and over again, Psalm 71, Psalm 70, tell the next generation, remind them of the wonders of the Lord, remind them of the compassion that's of the right, Lord, right. remind them of the things of the Lord, because what? They will not be rebellious, the scripture says, and that's Psalm 78. Yeah, yeah. Why won't they be rebellious? Because they're remembering what God did in the past. The children of Israel yeah. did not remember the mighty works going through the Red Sea. Whatever your Red Sea was, whatever your problems right. were, 
Let the generation after you know. And the Bible says they will not be rebellious. Yeah, they will right. remember right. and their heart will be steadfast mm -hmm. and their spirit will be faithful. Yeah. Well, that's good. Do we have anything I different? I do have something else, though. Okay. I, I, think, I do, too. I think there are also, <laughs> like, issues, though, that maybe aren't, like, so biblical mm -hmm. that grandparents need to respect the parents about mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I, I remember there were some things, like, with my mom where she remembered, like, always, like, lathering the babies up with lotion and, like, giving them cereal when they were one month old and, like, things like that mm -hmm. where those things have changed since we were babies. And I would say, mom, you're not supposed to put lotion on the baby till they're six months old. Like they've yeah. learned medical things now, like where their skin like isn't supposed to mm. take in the lotion. You know, you're not supposed to feed them anything solid till like, and those were my wishes. And I wanted her to respect oh. those. And she did. My mom did respect those, but that those things changed That's medically. When you were around, when yeah. you around her, and I gave the baby. Yeah. Right. Hey, hey, <laughs> she was gone, and the baby <laughs> got cereal. She was we lathering the baby, it up. Right? Yeah. Because I mean, this is a good question, but I just think I think always oh, about sorry. those of us who are watching us, and today's generation of teenagers are totally different and things are totally different. So as the grandparent, you do need to be aware that your ch the grandchildren, it's not, they're not all bad. It's just really, really different. Yeah. So remember that as you're possibly correcting. And this question is really good too. And you wrote this, aw. My dad has remarried quickly after my mother's death. I'm happy that he's happy, but there's a part of me that feels betrayed. We can get that. And he's so quickly, how can he move on after my mom so quick? I don't want anything to do with the wife. He can't understand why. We have seen this story over right. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Something just that we have had personal experience with. When a man loses a wife, he usually remarries right. very quickly afterwards. The woman, sometimes they're like, I'm free. No, they're not. And they're just, they take their time. I mean, they're not in a rush to get remarried. I don't know what the psychology of that is or if it's scriptural, but there is an aspect of moving too quickly and it hurts people. There's also an aspect of they're alone and they're feeling alone and they want a companion. They want somebody to help them. <clears throat> so this one particular pastor that we helped after he lost his wife and, um, and his church and we supported him and prayed for him. We had him on our staff for a while. He got remarried very quickly and the kids did not approve. Wow. And right. it was a constant source of strife and division. Years later, I mean, this, this woman that he married took care of him, mm. was a companion to him, was a good woman, a loving woman and cared for him and honored him till his very last breath. Mm -hmm. So there's that as well, is that, I mean, she took care of him in his final days of life and brought honor where there would have probably right. been aloneness and emptiness. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. it is a brutal, brutal thing, you mm -hmm. know, and depending on the age and the stage and the circumstance and, and the, the age of the and kids the too, I think depends on the age of the yeah. children. I was gonna right. say that, I, I <laughs> think for sure, um, personally speaking, I mean, even being a widow, um, yes. you know, my children are grown, but I still definitely consider them as, it, who would have known that I would actually be living some of the questions we talked about yes. right. prior right. to, yes. you know, exactly. what do you do, you know, right. blah, 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 blah. And I would always yes. say things like, well, you know, I want to secure my children's future. I'm not really excited about somebody coming and riding on a horse and you know what I mean? Where do you take an off with? What's on the backpack? Yeah. Right. I want my children <laughs> to have what they're supposed to have. Yeah. So, um, so that's from the grown person's expect. I mean, having grown children. But however, when you have children, one thing I can tell you about grief is, um, if I drew you a picture of grief, it would just look like a bunch of scribble. Mm -hmm because you're all over the place, you're up, you're down. And usually nine times out of 10, when somebody marries fast like that, they are not ready. They right. are not healed. Mm -hmm. They have not grieved That's properly. Good. They yeah. do not have the closure. So right. you're not thinking clearly. Right. And sometimes if you, if a man is left with children, women too, I don't want to be gender biased, right. you know, yeah. the fear of how do I pay the bills? Who's mm -hmm. gonna help me raise the children? Mm -hmm. I got daughters, I don't know how to teach them, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So you're really doing it for the wrong reasons that you're actually trying to make that person your God. 
And so you have to be sensitive to also, because even in my situation, I grieve because it was a different relationship. I grieved my husband, my children grieved their father. If they were younger, they don't even know where to file that at yet. Mm -hmm. Then you bring somebody else in. And I'm not saying that you don't have a right to continue your right. life, but they are still very much so a part of your life. They are, from this, it sounds like they're young. They're it, young does, it, doesn't yeah. really, it doesn't say, well. No, but for, for the way it, it sounds, it, 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 I, I'm assuming, so we're addressing both. We hit the older now, we're on the children that you're, yeah. you're still raising and growing up in the home. The other thing is, is that you have to realize too, it's gonna take those children a while because there's, a, there's that disloyalty thing there, you right. know, mm -hmm. um, where I feel like I can't, Corey was my mom and then my, you know, he, he marries you. Well, my loyalty lies with my mother, yes. you know, so it, that's going to take a while to work out. And I think one of the biggest things some, anybody can do entering into a, a, a marriage such as that is to assume your own place. Don't try to take the mother's Don't place. Don't right. try to take the, right. the father's the place. If you're yeah. If you're, right. if you're, right. uh, the, 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 the step parent is there. They would say yeah. but you know um, I do I really think that sometimes people just do it way too fast and quit trying to spiritualize it right well I think we covered that that was good thank yeah, you girls good. and our last question for this segment is really good too because these are tough questions and someone did write this to us and it says what is a bad <laughs> habit you think think that Christian women need to break hmm Roxy, do you have any bad habits? Uh, yes, and I'll just speak about it right now. Okay, come on. Talk too much and listen too little. Mm. <laughs> Proverbs 21:11 says, the wise learns by listening. Mm. And I said this years ago, and I think it's worth repeating. Steve Covey, most people don't listen with intent to understand. Ooh, they listen right, with right. the intent to reply. To respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If right. you're hopping on, <laughs> the back of somebody talking and did not even process what they said, you are not listening. And I'm thinking of that little boy, remember that YouTube? He tells his mother, Linda, Linda, you're not listening to me, Linda. <laughs> he took the cookie out of the cookie jar and whatever, and he's focusing on her and trying to get her to listen. But in understanding, what you have to do is ask questions. Don't reply. Ask a mm -hmm. question about what they just said. And then you'll sit back, you'll understand the picture better, and you'll re reply more wisely. Right, so that's, that's the good one. Corey, what about you? Do you have any bad habits, and what do you think Christian women need to stop doing? I think that <clears throat> there used to be like a stigma of like church ladies. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I feel like the the pendulum has sort of swung the other direction mm -hmm. where women have sort of gone the other direction and they're like I don't want to be like a traditional church lady anymore. And I feel like they're, you know, they're just like I'm going to be like this modern hip church woman and I don't want to be associated with like this old, you know, bitty church lady and I'm not going to be part of this like old Bible study, you know, thing. And I just think, I just think people are too caught up in like categories Ooh, of that's good. That's good. what group am I in? And there's like these yeah. exclusive groups and cliques and, and it's like, Stop worrying about what group you're in. And that's not just church. No, it's right, not. Right. But we're talking about what, you know, Christian, in Christian right. women groups. Right. We need all kinds of women. We need yeah. old. We need young. We need traditional. Pretty we need true. modern. We need, we need everybody. It. And you don't need to be categorizing people. We need to all come together. We need to hear. That's why we have sister to right. sister. Right. Because we bounce off each other and we learn from each other. Yeah. Over the 10 years, we have learned so much from each other. Yeah, right. And it's yeah, yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. So stop being afraid of the women you don't know and the groups that you're not in That's and really, being exclusive wow. and That's clicky. Because it is so beautiful to learn mm -hmm. from each other. I it really that. is. I see it your too. church. It's, it's or like your church, which is my church. Yeah. Do we, am I in a click? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I think, like, too, what you're saying is that the cookie cutter. Like, look at the five of us. We're all believers. We read the same word. We all worship God. We all love the Lord, build the church, but we're not like a cookie cutter in our exact thoughts and how we dress and how we look, you know? So I think that's beautiful in the body of Christ. I actually had to ask my husband and my daughter this question. I was just stuck. Like, which is weird because yes. I love Christian women. Like, <laughs> yes. they're my yes. favorite. I like them all. And I mean, real quickly, my daughter said gossip. She said, oh, Christian yes. girls gossip more than my worldly girls, friends. Oh. And I thought, that's, that's terrible. Crazy. So the gossip has to stop. The comparison has to stop. Yeah. We yeah. have to support yeah. one yeah. another. Right. Competition, encourage one another, Be have each other's yes. back. And just stop it all. We're all like the, on the same playing field and we all want, should want each other to win. Well, then what did Pastor Buck say? He said gossip. Gossip. He said little catty gossiping yeah. behind the scenes. Oh, and I gosh. was like, I hate that. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I, you know, I, I don't answer all the questions all the time, but this particular question touched my heart because Christian women shouldn't do this and that is worry have fear mm. for what's coming next instead of just living That's today good, yeah. and, yeah. and really enjoying the joy in the journey. So I think lots of people do that, but Christian women, uh, you shouldn't open right. your Bible. Stay right there, we'll be right back. I'm gonna jump right in with this next question that you asked us. And I'm gonna ask, oh, Amy, I'm gonna ask you. Okay. And it's simple, kind yeah. of. It says, how do you identify sin? I think this is great to talk about because <laughs> it's, you know, talking about sin is not a real popular no, subject. Yes, right, right. Um, you know, sin, anything that separates us from a loving God. But I think it's important to realize that we were all born into sin. That's true. That's right. That we're all sinners that we all, even when we're born again, filled with the spirit, we will miss it and we will fall short of the glory of God. And I think it's important to know too that, that we walk in different revelations of what is sin. Like what is sin to me? Right. What would separate me from God? A new believer, someone just, yes. my, it, they might not have a clue and it might not bother them at all. But it, so there's different levels of revelation. But the one thing is, is that we are all sinners saved by grace. We Amen. will all fall short of the glory of God. That's why we all need him. That's why he's our savior. That's why we have the grace of God. So nobody is perfect, That's not right. one That's but right. him. Do you have a scripture for me, scripture girl? I actually do. In James 1, it says, if you're a hearer of the word and not a doer, you're really a sinner. Once you hear God's right. word, and he reveals, oh That's right. like she was saying, a new believer might not know, know God's word that this is wrong, right. mm -hmm. that yeah. gossip or uh, whatever else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once you hear God's word and you're not a Counting doer, right. then you're a sinner. Because the book of James says, wow. the Bible is a mirror That's that right. shows us who mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. And we're like those people that walk away and forget what the Bible says about us and we keep doing what we want to do. Right. So, and I'm preaching to myself too. Uh, we need to be a doer of the word. That's why the world sometimes calls us hypocrites because yep. they think we, we should be doing something, but it's what God says. We answer to him wow. and be a doer of the word. That's good. Speaking of that, like have. revelations and all of that, which is great, but as you just so plainly said, you know, to him that know to do good and doeth not, right. it's sin. Yes. You know, yeah. and it's the, what you, sin, you know, when you deliberately go against the will of God, um, you know, we forget. Sometimes we think, because if I live what I think is better, then I'm more righteous than you. Right. Like the yeah. guy that prayed Sounds to good. prayer in right. the Bible, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> but I'm, we're all made righteous through his righteousness, yes. you know? So mm -hmm. I'm no better than you are. And there's a difference between mm. revelation and conviction. 
right. and we talked about this right. on some other subjects, oh, you know. Right. So my conviction, I can't turn it into a doctrine by right. which I hold you accountable right. to. That's so right. maybe my that's convictions good. are a little bit different. And right. that, wow. without that, if I don't have the conviction which comes from the Holy Ghost, then I have condemnation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't like that. Wow. And that's what yeah. we try to sh shed on people. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sin good. identity or can I ask you the next question? Sure. Okay, good. But I just want to tell you, the 12 commandments, I mean the 10 commandments, the 10 commandments. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, true. The 10 commandments, if you just follow those, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Don't talk about <laughs> sex. <laughs> just one right Jesus, over. Jesus said there were Don't correct your grandkids. Don't correct your grandkids. Okay, I was thinking about the commandments when we're talking about sin. Love God and love your neighbor. Yeah, it's, it's not that hard, you guys. It's not that hard. But this is hard. Speaking of hard. Oh, this, what a question. What is the hardest lesson you have had to learn so far in your life? And on the, on the promo, I said, I'm still learning, but what do you think? You know that Michael W. Smith song, this is, this is one of the hardest lessons I had to learn. Friends aren't friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. Ooh. I think that's wow. one of well, the song is Friends of Friends, friends Forever, forever. Yeah. if the Lord is Lord of them. them. But the hardest thing I've had to learn is that friends aren't friends forever if the Lord is them. Because even right. Christian friends are yeah. human and right. imperfect and they hurt and betray you. And I think that's wow. one of wow. the hardest that's lessons good. I've had to learn. Wow. Oh, Corey. Oh. That makes me sad. Oh. But it's, but not my sisters. Yeah. Not your yeah. sisters. Do you have um, a scripture about I, this? I am sad because I was one of the hurters, not the hurties. Oh. In yeah, your life, you mean other oh, people? Oh, yeah. Proverbs 13, <laughs> one who guards. This, I just wrote, it's funny that these questions came right after I wrote this and put it on my desk. One who guards their mouth protects their life. You know. protect your life if you guard your mouth, yeah, but the yeah. one who opens their lips invites their own ruin. Mm. The big, I'm not going to say in my life, but recently, I have hurt people that I like and love mm -hmm. for no good reason. You know, the anger of man doesn't fulfill the righteousness of God. So let That's me explain. I'm upset about an incident. Mm -hmm. They bring it up and they're the innocent party. They're the innocent person. But I, I replace my anger or displace it on that person because they're so sweet and kind they could, I think they could take it, mm -hmm. and I hurt them. Mm. And so I, I see it. I see it in the grocery store with mothers and children. Mm. They're um, upset yeah. about their lives and are taking it out oh, on their right, kids. Right. Uh, you know, you see it on the streets. You see it in your own family. You see it in friends. You displace your anger in the wrong place, and then you hurt people like Corey's saying, and you're Christians. And you think you have a right to be angry about something, and you do not have the right to be angry. That's a good lesson. Do you girls have something? You know, it's funny, when I first read that, I could not think of anything. And I thought, I don't know what my hardest lesson is, but I can think of my most beneficial lesson. Okay. And mm. the most beneficial sounds so sweet and spiritual, and then of course the Lord showed me the other, but I'll show both. So my, bo my most beneficial one was learning is to spend time with God, just to spend time with Him. That's a good. Not to get a word, not to get right. an answer to that's prayer, good. but just that's to become good. more intimate with Him. That's good. But my hardest lesson um, so far for me has been, trying to understand or being sensitive to the fact that everyone doesn't see what you see mm -hmm. and don't feel and respond to things the way that you do. That's so true. And that's, yeah. t that's so mm -hmm. tough. And I, I think that us, mm -hmm. the five of us, mm -hmm. sharing some heartfelt feelings with you, I hope that you get it into your hearts and you can profit from some of our mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to wrap this up. I'm sorry for all We are still talking here and we're all like, I'm sorry, Corey, that, you know, your friends let you down and we're sorry. One of my hardest lessons that I've had to learn and work through is to stay put in the hard places. Mm -hmm. 
when all of hell is trying to run you out of town, drive you into the ground, stay put in the hard places. Let perseverance, steadfastness have its place in your life because so many people bounce out before they see the fruit that God has in their life. So I like to stay, stay planted, get deep roots and branch out in your life. We always like to end sister to sister with the scripture and that is from 2 Corinthians 1 verses three and four. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. And I just, isn't that, that is, I need to write, he is the Father of compassion. Do you need compassion right now? He's the Father, he's the Lord. Lord of compassion, the God of all comfort. So I just pray right now that the God of comfort and compassion will run into your relationships today with your family, with the stepmom, with the son, with the disciplining and correcting the children in all areas of your life where you maybe feel tension or struggle or strife that the God of all comfort and peace would be with you. That is our prayer for you today. And t something that Flo said right at the end here about the hardest lesson, and she said, the best lesson I learned is that God just said, be with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't have to give me the laundry list of wants and needs because he just wants you to be with him. And I love being with my sisters. And there's a scripture that I have that we end and it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a woman sharpen the other. And then I say, these girls make me a better Kathy. See you again. <laughs>